Hello everyone. You are watching scardia.com and I am Dr. Hamad Anar. Today our topic is degenerative disorders of spine. In this lecture we'll be discussing the disorders which are related to the degenerative disease of the disc whether in the form of disc degenerative disorders or acute intervertebral disc prolapse. We will be discussing the most common intervertebral disc degeneration then we're moving on towards the acute intervertebral disc prolapse and other causes of low back pain as well. We'll be discussing how the interplay of this degeneration and intervertebral prolapse may eventually initially lead to low back pain, then eventually further aggravate into some form of a spondylolisthesis, spastinosis, and in some form of radiculopathy as well. From then onwards, we will be discussing what are the different changes which occur with the aging in the intervertebral discs. We will be discussing the different parts of discs, whether what is annulus fibrosis and nucleus pulposis, and what are the different changes, for example, what happens to the water content, collagen content, proteoglycan content, and even the contractin sulfate concentration and keratin sulfate concentration. And we will be discussing in details what happens in aging as well as osteoarthritis of the disc as well. Then we are moving on towards the how to look for the intervertebral disc degeneration. We were discussing specific sign and features and especially on the x-ray, lumbosacral spine and AP and lateral view as well as what do we see when we get an MRI or even the CT scan or discography as well. And we were discussing what have, what, why the disc, uh, discography is now been contraindicated or is now not more done anymore. From then onwards, we'll be moving on to the acute intervertebral disc prolapse site and symptoms. What are its symptoms and signs and how the patient presents with an acute intervertebral disc prolapse. And what, what we need to do and what we need to look for, especially what are the different reflexes which may become diminished when the patient is having a problems of radiculopathy or myelopathy as well. From then, we will be discussing the imaging of acute intervertebral disc prolapse. With the, usually with the spine, the first and foremost is always the X-rays, but then there may be specific modalities as well. For example, MRI and with or without gadolinium scan may be required as well for to rule out other associated differentials which may be associated with the acute intervertebral disc prolapse. There may be space occupying lesion, there may be a cardiac one syndrome, there may be epidural abscess or epidural tear or there may be fibrosis or it may be associated with epidural hematoma as well. Now all this and how to differentiate all these from the acute intervertebral disc we will be discussing exactly in the lecture. From then we will be uh, moving on towards the treatment of acute intervertebral discs which we may be in form of a laminectomy with or without posterior instrumentation and fusion then may be in form of a laminotomy or there may be extra foraminal laminectomy or uh, there may be only associated with different procedures which may be done to actually increase the spinal cord volume so that the pressure symptoms of the disc prolapse can be actually prevented. And we will be discussing how much is the disc volume and what are the different procedures detail which, which we can use to actually decrease the uh, pressure symptoms over the spinal cord canal. From then, we are moving on to one of the surgical emergencies which may lead uh, from uh, acute intervertebral disc prolapse such as Cordaiquina syndrome. We will be discussing what are the signs and symptoms of Cordaiquina syndrome and why it is a surgical uh, emergency and what we need to do so that we can decompress the Cordaiquina syndrome within 48 hours. And from that onward, we'll be discussing the cause of the low back pain and what is chronic low back pain or chronic failed low back pain syndrome, which may predispose the patient to multiple other problems and which may be very debilitating and problematic for the patient. And how we'll be discussing the algorithm that how what to go about once the patient presents to you with a chronic low back pain and what are the different signs symptoms, what are the different investigations you need to do and how you need to rule out different things which may be associated with the chronic low back pain and what are the different red flags which you must remember if they are happening then you need to investigate early especially if you need to get x-rays and different modalities done early if the chronic low back pain comes with the red flags. 
Now, if you want to watch the complete lecture, go to www.scadia.com and you can watch this whole lecture over there. And if you are interested in other lectures as well of the orthopedics, whether it is spine, pediatrics, reconstruction, arthroscopy, or even the sports medicine, then you can go to www.scadia.com and watch complete lectures over there. As well as if you want to watch other lectures other than the orthopedics, then you can go to the same website and you can watch all the lectures whether on the basics or the other medicine, gynae or other subjects as well. So uh, log on to www.scadia.com and watch my complete lecture over there. Thank you very much.